Pastor Mike Leung is going to share the devotion this morning. Pastor Mike Leung from First Assembly of God, KL. All right. Thank you, Pastor Lisa, for uh, this opportunity to share for this morning. And good morning, everyone. Glad to see uh, everyone joining for the prayer this morning, 6.30, uh, coming up together to pray together, to intercede especially. And now, uh, I really thank God for the technology. Uh, of course, due to pandemic, uh, this technology is developed, but it is always good, even though we are all separated by location, we are all united in hearts. And the Bible says when two or three are gathered together, He is with us. And this morning, even though we are uh, separated by location, we are all united in hearts and God's presence is with us as we all pray together, as we all intercede in the area of mission and evangelism. Now, this morning, uh, I would like to just share something simple from my heart. And I would like to take from Mark chapter, third, uh, chapter 3, verse 14. Mark chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Jesus appointed 12 that they might be with him and, they, and he might send them out to preach. Again, Jesus appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Now, in this verse, there are two things I want to highlight is that Jesus chose the 12 disciple that they might be with him. Jesus trained them, Jesus lived with them, Jesus taught them, Jesus grew them, and also he might send them out to preach that Jesus sent them in many occasions. Jesus sent them two by two. Jesus sent them out to preach the gospel, to preach in power, to preach and also to uh, cast demons, to do healing. Jesus trained them. Jesus lived with them with the purpose of sending out to preach. Now, in our church, we all want to make disciples. We all want to build strong believers, strong in faith, strong in character. But I think one question that I often uh, remind myself and ask myself is this. What's the ultimate goal of building a strong believer? What, what's the purpose of building a strong church? What is it that we want to achieve when we build strong believer and strong church? Is disciple, the purpose of this is just to build strong believer and strong church? Is being strong the ultimate purpose of discipleship? And I believe through this verse, Mark chapter, 3, um, chapter 3, verse 14, the ultimate purpose of building a strong believer, a strong church, of discipling believers, it is to have believers to become mature and also multiplying believers so that the mature, the multiplying believer will fulfill the mandate of mission and evangelism. We all spend a lot of uh, our effort to disciple, to train, to equip, to grow believers. We want them to be with Jesus. We want them to draw near to Jesus. We want them to build a deeper, loving, meaningful relationship with Jesus. We want them to love God, love God with all their heart, soul, and mind. And I believe that it is not uh, an issue for them. Many believers, they love God. Many believers, they sincerely serve God. But I think the aspect of loving people is sometimes lacking, especially after pandemic. During pandemic, many of us, we have no problem worshipping God, serving God, and also spending time with God. And in our relationship with God, there's no problem individually. But one of the side effects that I can see is that we become very good in loving God and we neglect in loving people. We neglect in... Uh, coming together with other people in small group, in serving them, in building relationship with people, sometimes we neglect that. And even more so, we neglect loving lost soul, loving other people who are not believer. So COVID has one side effect. It, it made us loving God more and more. Our relationship with God is good. But at the same time, we may have neglected the love to connect with other believers and the love of lost souls. So one important way for us to encourage our members to love others is to love lost souls and also to have the passion to see people coming to Christ. You see, one area we need 
believers to have is the mandate of mission and evangelism, to reach out, to have the compassion to share the gospel around the people. And also, I believe that one effective way is to build our believers, not just to be disciples, not just to love God, but also to love people. And I would like to share that discipleship in discipleship, we need to build them to be missional, to be missional in their life, that they know that they have this mandate of mission and evangelism. They know that the ultimate goal of loving God is also to lift out the heartbeat of God, which is to see lost souls, to seek lost souls, and also to add them into the kingdom of God through mission and evangelism. One of the ultimate goal of loving God it is to reach out to lost souls, to bring them back to the right relationship with God, to be missional. I believe that our discipleship effort today, we must have this ultimate goal of mission and evangelism. As we want to grow them to be healthy believer, they must be able to multiply, to reproduce through mission and evangelism. Because a lot of time when we talk about discipleship, we often ask ourselves, are we doing discipleship right? Are we ourselves being a disciple? Is our disciples doing what God wants to do? And it's more than just prayer. It's more than just Bible study. It's more than just serving God in the four walls of the church. Discipleship must also include sharing, caring, and also the mandate of mission and evangelism. A lot of time I ask even myself, am I a disciple? Even though I'm a pastor, but am I a disciple? I think one area of being a disciple, to be healthy as a disciple, is the area of mission and evangelism. If I am a believer, but I'm not sharing Christ, then am I really balanced as a disciple? Am I really balanced in my love to our Lord? And therefore, discipleship must more than just become a personal growth in Christ. We must build believers. We ourselves must be missional in our daily life. That means that out of our relationship with Christ, we build relationship with others, even with unbelievers. And we build connection with them. We build friendship with them. And we start loving for them. We start caring for them. We start to find opportunity to share our life testimony. We start to pray for people, asking opportunity to pray for people. Now, I always tell uh, my members, I ask them, build relationships so that you will find opportunity to share Christ. And some of them will ask, Pastor, can I just be a, a, a good friend only? Must I always bring in gospel? So I told them, as believers of Jesus Christ, what is the best thing we can offer to our unbelieving friends? Is it our time, our effort? Is it our companionship only? I think the best thing that we can bring to our unbelieving friends is ultimately the gospel that will bring them eternal life. And that's why if we become friends for the sake of being friends only, I think we put friendship far above God. And therefore, as a disciple, I believe that we must always make friends, make connection so that ultimately we want to bring them the best news, the good news, which is salvation. And also, nowadays, it's very hard to straight away talk about the gospel. I think the best way is to tell our own life experience with God, how God has been good to us. We don't need to straight away or directly preach the gospel, but by sharing how good God is in our life, I think that is one way of sharing gospel, sharing our life testimony and actively seeking to pray for them. I have a few friends who are non-believers and uh, one of them just got retrenched. So in a WhatsApp group, he shared with uh, 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 my group of friends who are not believers uh, since college. So he says that he has been retrenched. So I text him. I says, hey, can we meet up for a coffee, for a drink and talk about it? Now, my friend knows that I'm a pastor. So he came out. He, 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 uh, we have a drink. 
And at the end of it, I asked him, hey, you know I'm a pastor. Can I pray for you? Because he's in need of looking for a job. He said, yes, pray for me. He don't believe in Jesus, but he's open for prayer. So I pray for him, finding opportunity to pray, pray for people. And then they have another friend who, 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 who uh, have marriage problem. The wife want, wanted a divorce. So I asked him, come out for a drink, talk to him about uh, marriage, give him some hope, encourage him. And at the end, I said, can I pray for you? And he's open for prayer. These are not believers, but don't be surprised that many of them, many of them, they're open for prayer. We just speak and we just bless them. Now, of course, you don't pray long, long prayer, you see. Just pray something that will bless them. And, 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 and let me tell you this. It's even possible to pray for those who are majority in this country. It's okay to pray for them. You ask them, they are actually open. They want blessing. Everyone wants blessing. So seek opportunity to pray for people. Seek opportunity to share the gospel. And when time comes, when the Holy Spirit prompts us, be bold and courageous to share the gospel directly. And also, at the same time, when the time is right, when all has been done, when the foundation has been laid, when the connection has been established, I think ultimately we need to have the courage to ask for salvation. One thing I, I, I observe is that many of our believers, even though they may be believers for many years, for 20, 30 years, they may be leaders, they may be people who are very well versed with the Bible. One thing that they are lacking is that they do not have the courage to share the gospel directly. They may not have the courage to share about salvation. When I ask some of my leaders and ask, hey, if someone really wants to believe in Jesus right now, if I send you to close the deal, what would you do? What would you say? And to my surprise, some of my leaders who are very seasoned, they say, Pastor, I really don't know what to say. I really don't know how to pray. They know how to do uh, ministry. They know how to lead the church, but they do not know how to share the gospel. They do not know exactly what to say, even though they know the gospel. They heard a lot of uh, sermon, and also they do not know how to close the deal by asking for salvation. I think this is something that we need to really look into to build believers who are missional, becoming uh, aware of their mandate of mission and evangelism. We need to inspire believers to believe that salvation is possible. It's not just during all the salvation altar call, during Easter's, uh, Easter's, Easter day or during special evangelistic rally. Salvation is possible in our daily life where we build connection, we share gospel, we pray for them, we love them, we, we, we care for them. And ultimately, out of that loving and caring relationship, we share Christ, we ask for salvation. One-to-one -one personal evangelism is possible. We must inspire our members so that our members, believers, they can be missional in their workplace to share gospel to their colleague to share gospel to their friends in school, study place, to, to share their friends to their neighbor when they go for marketing, when they go to copy them, they share gospel, they build relationship to be missional. And also to their friends and family members, whenever they go for a drink, they'll always bring out their life testimony, not in a very uh, religious way, but in a way that letting them know that as believer, we receive God's goodness and we share how God is good to us. So I believe that as a church, we need to be missional. Our members need to have that uh, uh, awareness of always sharing Christ. But as a church, collectively, as a church, I also believe that we need to be missional in partnering with other churches, with other organizations, with others, a missionary to expand the work of mission and evangelism, to expand the kingdom of God. And I believe that you, 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 you know there are many mission needs, especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Many churches, many organizations in Sabah and Sarawak needs the help of us from Peninsula. 
God have given us the strength, the resources as a blessed church here in Klang Valley. But um, we are blessed. We need to go and be a blessing. We need to go and partner with churches, with all the villages in Sabah and Sarawak. I believe that there's huge area, huge revival coming to Sabah and Sarawak. And we can be a part of that when we connect with churches, villages, mission works in Sabah and Sarawak. Connect with them. We bring open opportunity and bring our members to go and do mission in Sabah and Sarawak. One challenge that a lot of people say is that we don't have time, we don't have money. And I believe if we share the, the, the vision to them to really see how we can do the work of evangelism in Sabah and Sarawak, people would give and people would come. And I believe that in Sabah and Sarawak, there's huge potential for mission and evangelism, especially the work of re-evangelism, meaning that a lot of uh, Sabahan Sarawakian, they are born in Christian family, but they are just Christian by name. They, are, they don't really know their Lord God. So the effort of re-evangelism, going there to evangelize to them, that is something which is we can do. And I believe that we need to do that collectively as a church. And not just Sabah and Sarawak, there are many mission needs for the East Coast states in our peninsula, like Kelantan, Trunganu, and Pahang, which, we, which, which also includes uh, Kedah and Perlis. I think that we churches in Klang Mary can partner with different churches from Kelantan, Trunganu, Pahang, Kedah, and Perlis. You know, we partner with them. Let's have a three-year program that we always send our people there to the churches, do some program, uh, discipleship program, community program, that we reach out to people. One thing I realized is that you know, uh, churches in Kedah, Trunganu, Pahang, even though they are small church, but church has become a community meeting place for people. And if we partner with churches in this area, Kedah, Kelantan, Trunganu, churches can become a place where community things happen and we run program with them, for them. We bring our people there and it can be an attraction for people to gather and they, they, they do sit down and listen to you. So I think one thing that we can do is to reach out, partner with uh, churches, organization in Sabah, Sarawak, Kelantan, Trunganu, Pahang, help them. We send our people so that it will be a long-term uh, commitment. It's not just touch and go. Long-term commitment, three years, five years partnership with mission and evangelism. So when we are intentionally missional, whether uh, personally or as a church, we build an awareness of the need of evangelism, the urgency of the work of expanding the kingdom of God and producing discipleship who has personal conviction about sharing Christ. Those who have mission, those who have mission in the heart, and, and, and this is how I believe that when we constantly uh, do this movement of mission and evangelism, you will find that there are people in your church who have mission calling, who have this tendency to do mission. And that is where we train them to become missionary. Not just build our members to become missional, but we become a missionary building church. We become a missionary sending church. And my prayer is that all churches will become a disciple-making and missionary-sending church. We need to come back to this disciple-making with the ultimate goal of multiplying, with the ultimate goal of building believers to be missional, and we become a mission-sending church, missionary-sending church. Again, let me end with this same verse again, Mark chapter 3, verse 14. Jesus appointed 12 that they, that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. And allow me to end with this one story. Uh, yesterday night, tonight, I'm doing a, uh, a, a, a funeral service. A very old member of my church, a very faithful member, he is 89 years old. And there are a lot of people who came for the funeral packed with people, many people. And when the eulogy is open, all of them say one thing, 
this brother, he made an impact in my life because he shared gospel. He shared gospel. He shared gospel. He was 89 years old. He is now with the Lord. But one thing that is prominent in his life is that he shared gospel. A man who always had compassion and the passion to do mission and evangelism. I think we need these kind of people. People come, not because he is a great leader, not because he is a good brother in Christ, but because all of them says, this brother, he preached gospel to me. And tonight I come for this funeral because I want to honor him, his passion for evangelism. I think this is something that we need to build. Disciple who ultimately be missional. So I hope that this sharing will be a blessing to all of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So right now, I'd like to hand the time for uh, worship and hand the time back to uh, Pastor Lisa.